Hi, welcome ladies and gentlemen. My name is Edwin Diaz, as you probably already know. I'm going to give you some tips and some more information in this lecture here. Now, I want you to remember that this is a crash course. This is not a complete guide into Vue.js or anything like that. This is meant just to get you up and running really fast with Vue.js. We, the objective he, uh, here is to learn the basics, okay? So we can start implementing it right away into our projects. Now, let me give you some tips that I usually do to my students. Remember to make your goals, guys. I know this is a very short course and you can finish this in an hour or two. But remember to make your goals, okay? Even if you can finish it in an hour or two, go ahead and finish it, okay? Make that decision, and this goes for anything that you do in life. Make your decision and finish what you start. So you make your goals, make sure that your goals are realistic, make a decision to do whatever it is that you need to do, and then once you get into it, finish it. Now, if you have any issues, post it in the discussions, guys. Just post it. Now, if you have any personal matters that you need to tell me, maybe you, you are recommending some type of improvement in the course or you want to talk about other things, message me. I'm here. And you can also find me in my blog, edwindiaz.com or message me at edwindiaz.com or private message me and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Now, lastly, I want to thank you for joining me in this course. Uh, it means a lot to me. And if you have any issues, again, I'm here for you. Or if you have any questions. See you in the next lectures. Hi, welcome, my dear students. So, let's talk a little bit about Vue.js, what it is, and let me give you some history about it. So, back a couple years ago, you know, from recording, by the time I'm recording this video, from this time that I'm recording this video, applications were not that advanced. They were advanced, but not as much as they are today, and they keep getting advanced every day. We had an HTML file, maybe some CSS and JavaScript on our application on the browser right and most of the code were in the server it was in the server okay most of the complex stuff that we were doing we let the server handle that and send back the response but nowadays we have a lot of that code that was in the server now in our browser working with our application so now that made things very disorganized for us as developers it was just a mess and it was very hard to maintain because we have so many JavaScript files all over the place with not a lot of tools to help us out. Our applications became slow and then with time they become just very messy, okay? And very ugly to be honest with you. It was very, not very good to code in JavaScript, trying to build applications using just JavaScript. It was just a mess. It was just very complicated. Now, that's when applications like, you know, frameworks like Angular, Ember, and now Vue.js came to the rescue. Let me put this in the slide right here so you can see it. In this course, of course, we're going to be talking about Vue.js, which is the lightest 
framework right now for you know playing with JavaScript now let me give you a little bit of background about Vue so Vue was created by this guy named Ivan or Ivan Yu just like you are my student Ivan Yu it was released in 2014 and is said to be a progressive framework which means that you can just plug it in anywhere in your project in your existing project and it would just work and do whatever you want it to do and then you can progressively grow your applications with it very 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 nice okay and very advanced uh, to play around with this now unlike any other frameworks you can locally create a file okay and locally reference that file download your scripts your Vue.js scripts and you can start playing around with it right away just with a script tag or you can just use a CDN link from any other website out there and reference it and you can start playing around right away without downloading anything else okay if you're building some simple features and even some amazing features that was really hard with jQuery or even by using vanilla JavaScript it's gonna become super easy with Vue.js now if you want more advanced stuff we can do that it has the capability of the CLI which is the command line interface and we can create advanced single file applications very easily and it's gonna help us have all the tools necessary for us to build it with ease now I'm gonna show you how to do that in this course now here's some of the features I like about Vue super fast guys this thing is fast it's very lightweight so I don't have to download a whole bunch of things to have a really cool application and it has great core libraries and a beautiful ecosystem you can look it up in the documentation you're gonna see what I mean now here's you know it has the structure of a very similar framework like angular because it you know the guy had the idea from angular even you worked in Google before in a project doing things with angular JS and you know the thought came to his mind why not build something or extract some of this functionality of angular to a more simplistic thing and that thing became Vue.js okay so he got the idea from angular so as you can see Vue.js has a very very similar thing to what angular ember or react is we you know separate our components and each of those components have their own HTML CSS and even JavaScript code okay remember that it was designed with a very simplistic approach and a progressive approach very adoptable very flexible very fast okay remember the approach is the most simplistic as possible so that way you can concentrate on building your feature not having to deal with tools or anything like that okay now if you guys are ready to start learning Vue.js or view if you want to call it that let's get started welcome my dear students so let's go ahead and start building a view application first let's download it real quick it's gonna be super easy let's go to viewjs.org we're gonna click on get started here and we're gonna find a link here it says development version or the production version I like this development version when we are developing because it gives us some console warnings which is pretty awesome now there are other ways of downloading Vue.js. You can also use a node package manager, npm node, uh, to download it. It's pretty cool, but this is the simplest way to actually download it and use it. Now, in my desktop here, I don't know if you notice, I have a folder, a view folder that I created, and I also have a editor open here, which I have that folder open there. Okay, in which I have that folder. I'm gonna click here and create a new file. It's gonna called be called index.html. As a matter of fact, let's press enter here and let's build a HTML markup here real quick. We don't need this, but it's good to have it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to delete all this and I'm gonna delete all that like this. And um, it should work. Okay. So now that I have Vue.js here, I'm going to 
create a script tag because I'm about to write some JavaScript, okay? So let's put that here. I hope you can see what I'm doing, guys. Okay, so to create a view app, the first thing is to link or bind the JavaScript with HTML here on top, okay? So I'm gonna create a div here with a, an ID of app like this, okay? And that's going to be my hook. So I'm gonna actually put that here. So we're gonna be using JavaScript to bind we're going to be using this code that we're going to be writing here to bind it, to bind JavaScript with HTML. Okay. So now the first thing is to instantiate the view object or a view instance, actually. And it's going to, we're going to say new view. Now keep in mind that this is coming from this file right here. Okay. Now we are, be, we are going to be passing an object to that new instance. Okay. And in that object, we have a couple of properties that exist, okay? In this property, EL, for the element, we could link whatever we want. We're gonna be using this as a CSS selector, and we're gonna be linking the app, which is this div right here, okay? So that's it. We have linked our JavaScript code here, our view, to our HTML. Now, to make this work so you can see it, that it is working, I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and use another property called data, okay? And this property is an object. And in here, inside this object, I got a couple properties. I can define any properties I want. This property already exists. This is something that is built in into the framework. But the properties that I'm going to create right now are going to be my property, custom-made properties. I'm going to create a property called message, and I'm just going to say hello like this. I'm going to give it a value. Okay, so I hope you see what I'm doing there. Super simple. Now here, the way we use that data here is by using string interpolation. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in the next lectures. But in string interpolation, works like this. Two curly brackets and two curly brackets, just like that. And in between here, you use the data that you have in your view model. Okay, this is called the view model here. Okay, so now if I save this file with Control S or Command S, okay, in a Mac, and I view it, I'm gonna click here, you're gonna see hello there, okay? See how simple that is? And that's it. Now if I change this again here, and I save it, come back here and refresh, you can see that that reflects the changes there. And that's it guys, you see how easy it was to actually create our first view app? And this is just a small app, okay? In the next lecture, we're gonna learn a lot more about view, so keep tuned for that. See you in the next lecture. Welcome back, my dear students. So, in this lecture, we're gonna learn a little more about string interpolation, something that we did on the last lecture for a few seconds there, okay? So let's get to it. So I changed my text editor for an IDE, which I use all the time, it's called WebStorm. But you're welcome to keep using your brackets editor. Nothing else is going to change on this course. As a matter of fact, they're both almost the same. We're gonna have a left side for structure for our folders and files, and a right-hand side here for our code, okay? So I want you to go ahead and do a save as on index, and we're gonna call this new file string interpolation like this okay simple as that so make sure you switch to that file and we're gonna do a couple more things here with string interpolation we saw that we were able to bind data from our component here from our uh, new instance or, or view instance or view model to our HTML and that was great stuff right I mean guys I enjoyed it a lot but there's a little bit more things that we can do with string interpolation, okay? Remember that we're just getting data from here to here, displaying it. So I'm gonna create another property here called um, number. As a matter of fact, I'm going to create the property down below here in my next line. Number, I'm gonna give it a value of 10. 
Now I'm gonna go here real quick and I'm gonna try to display that like that. And then if I switch to my browser and I refresh, let's open this up. There we go. You can see that value there. But what if I wanted to add some type of number to that? Let's go ahead and try that out to see if it works. Refresh and you can see now that the value has changed. Good stuff guys, good stuff. I'm gonna give this a variable here and I'm gonna call this VM for view model. Okay, so that way I can use this. Now it's, it's telling me that my JavaScript version is not supported. This is because my WebStorm does not know about ES6 yet and I have to give it the JavaScript language that I want to use for my syntax highlighting. Okay, now we should know about, about that. Okay, good stuff. If you guys have not taken my ES6 course, I have a really good uh, ES6 TypeScript and Angular course just in case you guys want to jump into those technologies as well. So anyway, we have this variable here that we can use to play around with our values here. So we can open our, inspect our DOM and open our console. If I had it here, that would be nice. I thought I had it. There we go, right here. Okay. And what I can do here is really simple. I can grab the VM and I can grab the message and I can assign a different value to it. I can say Edwin, enter and it says now define VM all right so what I need to do is I need to refresh because I created this property make sure that you refresh and save the file so let's do that let's do this again VM message Edwin enter and you can see that that changes okay so this is a way of actually playing around with your code okay good stuff okay so what else can we do with string interpolation? Well, let me show you. We can also use, we can compare values here. So I'm going to create another property. Let's create a property called is active. And let's set that to a Boolean value true. Okay, you can see it right here. Then here, we are going to say if is active, I'm going to use a tenary operator. If is if act is active if is active, okay, is true, then I'm going to display is active. I want you to display is active. Else, I want you to display is not active. Something like that. We we'll come back here and refresh. And there we go. Okay, you can see that it is active. What if we set that property? VM is active to false enter you can see that that changes automatically now what you see here is reactivity you you're seeing this every time we change something here you can see it immediately happening here okay that's pretty awesome stuff okay now if I refresh of course that goes to the same to the same value again until I make it I make the changes in my code refresh there we go Awesome stuff, right guys? All right, so there's a lot, couple more things that I can do here. I can go ahead and play around and create a little more complex code here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab message, I'm gonna use a JavaScript split function to split it. Then I'm going to reverse it using the reverse function. And then I'm going to join everything together again and I'm gonna save it and now if I refresh you can see that message now is all the way reverse H E E L L O okay welcome back my dear students I hope you guys are really excited so today we're gonna to be learning a little bit more about data binding as a matter of fact this is the first lecture about data binding even though we string interpolation we did a little bit of data binding by kind of you know binding our data here to our app but this is called a string interpolation 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a save as on index. I'm going to call this data binding.html like this. I want you to follow me, guys. Okay, this is super important that you do so that way you learn this faster. And inside that data binding.html file, I'm going to start showing you, demonstrating you what we're talking about with data binding. So let's say, for example, that you have a link here and you have some type of property here with a link address. Uh, it's called the URL, that's the property, and the, let's just delete this message. The address is going to be HTTPS, and this is going to be my personal blog, edwindias.com, okay? And you want it to actually output it right here, and you would do something like this. You think you could do something like that, right? We can use string interpolation there, we can say URL. And we come back here, we double click on the file and we see that it is working here, but when we click it, it gives us some weird address. And don't worry about this local host here. This is my personal building server that I got with my IDE. When you double click on your file, you should be able to, you know, see that error as me, like this with all these percentages and numbers in the URL string there. So this is not working. Okay, when you are doing things like this, you might want to do bbind, which is binding that attribute, that HTML attribute to your data here. Now, mine is highlighting this in red because I have no support right now. I don't know what's going on with my plugin, but it's not, this is bbind is not working. So I'm going to use a shorthand, which is available as well. You just take the, take the bbind off and leave the colon, the colon right here, href, and that's the same thing, okay? So if I refresh, you can see this is not gonna work now. I just have to take this out there and refresh. And now if I click on this, you can see that it's, it is going to take me to that website. So it is working now, okay? So that's one way of doing data binding. Now remember that you can bind to any HTML attribute that you want. So if you want to bind to, let's say, an H1 that has an ID of, I don't know, bot, or this is going to be some dynamic ID and you have it in a data attribute here, and you say uh, dynamic ID, okay, that's, and that's, that could be any value. It could be maybe a three, four, three thousand, whatever. Here, you can display it so you can see it. Let's come down here and and write that ID down, that name, dynamic ID. I'm gonna make it 30 for my age. <laughs> and then um, a little bit, I'm a little bit older than that. And let's go ahead and go back here let's refresh and we can see that it, it does say 30 but if i check that data attribute i'm going to do inspect element by doing right click and, and inspect let's see what we get in that data attribute we got just tets here dynamic attribute the value is text let's bind it by doing a colon and remember that you it's the same thing as doing b hyphen bind okay let's refresh now and now you can see that that value changed to 30, which is the same value we got down here. Okay? So with bbind or the shorthand colon here, you can bind any attribute of your HTML with your apt data, which is really cool. Okay? Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next lecture. Welcome back, my dear students. So, in today's lecture, we're going to learn about two-way data binding, which is going to be really awesome, okay? So let's go to the index. I'm going to do a save as here, and I'm going to say two-way hyphen data binding HTML. Okay, let's open that up, and let's see how we can do, create a two-way data binding. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a template here called Bootstrap just because I want to make things a little nicer, okay? And um, I'm just going to use the Bootstrap CDN, guys. 
just like this and I'm gonna use the CSS I'm gonna copy the whole HTML link here it's just a HTML and CSS framework uh, library to make your code look better and as a matter of fact I'm going to do my bring it up here in the head and delete this cross origin stuff like this there we go and let's put this out the way the all the way in the bottom here okay great stuff now if I put a div container class we should see some margin on the side okay let's go back to our file let's see even our text should look a little different let's test this by putting some type of class on this hello uh, class um, let's just call it btn primary or something like that let's see yeah that's working okay you see it looks better all right so now that we got bootstrap let's play around with some data two-way data binding okay so I'm gonna create a form inside my app here and this form is going to have an input and this input is gonna have a class of form control and I'm gonna control the I'm gonna give this input a class of sits this is just gonna make it smaller than what it is going to be because if you leave it the way I was going to leave it this was gonna make my input really big okay right now it just stays on one side as you can see if I make it see stays half of the screen actually sits it's a 12 grid uh, library system grid system so now here if I wanted to do two-way data binding with message okay I want to I'm gonna show you how you can do this all you have to do is do V model use a V model directive okay remember these are called directives these are like attributes that has some type of functionality in the background okay that's what directives are uh, we're gonna you know we're gonna talk a little bit more about directives later on but V model and then here I can bind to that message property and right below here I can see right now if I refresh you can see it in both places let's take this out from here make sure you save your files now when I type in something here Edwin DS you can see it right below the magic of Vue.js guys awesome so we are binding data okay and the, the best part is that this works everywhere so if I do VM message and I, I do this here enter oops my VM is actually not defined so let's make sure that that property is defined there that variable let VM and let's refresh it make sure that our application is detecting that let's come back here and let's just say enter and you can see that in both places it changes in both places so with that directive ng model okay our data is linked both ways we got communication from the outside to the inside and from the inside to the outside pretty awesome stuff right from the outside to the inside from the inside to the outside two-way data binding guys there's a lot more things that you can do in the next lecture I'll give you another example thank you so much hi welcome back my dear student so in this lecture I want to give you another example of a two-way data binding okay I think you're gonna like this lecture so in this lecture here you can download a file that I got for you okay 
and um, so that way it's easier for you to have to write all that HTML okay so let's go inside this two-way data binding guy here and you don't have to worry about this I'm gonna have that file available for you but I do have to copy my stuff down okay all right so if I go ahead and open this file actually I am we have to do a save as I have to do a save as two-way data binding and name that number two okay and inside here I have to paste that piece of code that I'm gonna give you and that's just gonna be something like that okay some inputs all right so what I want to do is I want to bind all the values here together and when I take them off I want the values to go away so that way when we want to send this to some type of database or something they all go together now we can do this in PHP you know creating a form and you know an array inside the name attribute but with view is a lot simpler than that okay so I'm gonna make this smaller so you can see it let's come back here and let's see how we can do this so inside the input here of each of these elements I'm gonna put V and if you said V model you guessed it V model and I'm gonna name it options now I'm going to do the same thing for all my inputs paste it there and I'm gonna paste it there and now here in my instance I'm gonna create a property called options and I'm gonna set it to an empty array just like that okay simple and in here okay all I have to do there is grab use in a string interpolation and do options if I wanted to show my options that I'm selecting and I'm gonna jo join all of them okay with a comma and comma and then empty strings now if I refresh here and I click on this it says option one option two and option three where is this value coming from well remember that we have a value field here value one value two and value three okay pretty awesome stuff guys pretty awesome now of course you can bind that options to this guy right here as well okay see that get the same thing above really really awesome guys really awesome now keep this in mind look what I'm doing here here they all go without the space here they got the space that's because I'm using options that join which I can also use up here right actually I can't because I'm using I'm binding this with the V model here okay now you can go ahead and take this further and bind the value of this input okay and use uh, data binding there but I'm not going to do that I wanted to show you that this is possible and this is pretty cool thank you so much and I'll see you in the next lecture welcome back my dear students so let's get a little bit more knowledge about directives real quick uh, you can also go to the documentation find a lot more information but directives are pretty easy we already have been doing a couple of them right so let's go ahead and create a file here a save as from index.html let's call this directives let's go to that file and we already seen a directive I forgot where I put it this is a directive right here this h1 h anchor tag right here and we had a I believe was a URL All right let's copy that right here so that was that was a really cool directive that we learned let's come back here and that's not working that's because it's breaking down here we forgot that colon the 
comma, there we go. So that's working, but we also have another director that could help us hook into events. And let's create one right here. Let's just say click. And here we could access the V on directive. Okay, and pass in an event. Okay, and we can pass in a click or whatever event we want that is available in JavaScript. You're welcome to search on that, okay, for events. But, um, and we can do whatever we want in here. We can call that method, which we haven't got to that yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that property, which we don't have here. I'm going to create a property real quick. I'm going to call it number. I'm going to assign the value to 10. And we can grab that property, increase it. And let's actually look at it while we increase it. I'm going to do a, str a string interpolation here. And when I click on it, you can see that it does increase. So we add in one to it every time we're doing plus plus. All right. We can also do this backwards. Okay. And we can just say decrease here. Just giving you an example, guys. No biggie. Remember that. Um, see that? It's going down. This V on, we can have, we have a shorthand for this. Okay. So instead of doing this, which this is for binding elements, we have one that is an at symbol like that. Okay. That works the same. Let's take the calling out. Refresh. You can see that it still works. Okay. Now we also have modifiers for directives. Let me create a form real quick. And don't worry, this is not going to take much. And a button with a type of submit. And of course, it's going to be called submit or something. Refresh. We got this button right here. What I want to do is I want to increase the value here as well when, every time I click on this. But now if you notice, this is actually refreshing the page. We don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attach a submit event. And I'm going to use a modifier to prevent that default behavior. And I'm going to grab the number. And I'm going to increase it. Now if I refresh, you can see that that number increases, which is really awesome. Okay. So this is a modifier. They do have modifiers depending on the event that you're using. Okay. Pretty awesome, guys. And that's it for this lecture. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next one. All right. Welcome back, my dear students. So in this lecture, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be looking at how we can do styles, inline styles with Vue.js, which is going to be awesome. So I'm going to grab the index again. I'm going to do a save as. And we're going to be doing this a lot guys so get in the habit of doing this i'm going to be calling this binding inline styles.html great okay let's just come back here and take all this out let's go to that file okay all right so to bind styles it's super simple i'm going to show you so what i'm going to do is right here Let's actually create some type of div, empty div here, and I'm going to display the message. Just as simple as that. Okay. You might want to put a space here that way. Okay. Make sure you double click on that file and you open it up. All right. So let's say we want to do some inline styles to this using view dynamic colors, guys. That's what we're going to be doing here. Okay. So I'm going to create a, and let's do this after the message, put a comma here. I'm going to create a font size dynamically, and I'm going to set this to 30, just like that. And I'm going to come here and I want to style this. Okay. So. I'm going to bind the style, okay, by doing colon style. Remember that shorthand, right? And then I'm going to pass an object right here, like that with a curly bracket. So I'm going to say, well, I want to add a color, okay? So I'm going to add a color here of red, 
this is something that I don't have down here yet. Okay, that is going to be static. So I put the quotes there. And I'm going to put a comma here because I'm going to add something that is, okay, dynamic right here, font size. And font size, I'm going to put a colon there because it's an object. And I'm going to pass in the font size right here. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this font size is what we have natively in HTML in the style property, okay? You're going to see something like this, font size, okay? As a matter of fact, you can look it up, CSS properties. Okay, and font size, it looks like that, but when we need to, what we need to do is make a camo case. Okay, remember that you got CSS property and then you got JavaScript styling. Okay, JavaScript um, style properties. Okay. So there is a lot of JavaScript right here, font size, font weight, font size right here. So remember that we're using JavaScript, guys. So you need to research what of you know what property works for your um, JavaScript instead of CSS. So so this is the JavaScript version of that styling. So. Um, Font size, and this is the dynamic data that we, that a property that I got down here. But we need to add pixels to it, right? So I'm gonna do a little concatenation here. I'm gonna add PX to it. Okay. So now if I go back here and I refresh, you can see that that looks even a little bigger, right? If we inspect it, you can see that that property font the color is red. The font size is 30 pixels. Pretty awesome stuff, right? All right, so if I come here, let's go to the, let's create a variable here and let's call this VM. Let's refresh and let's go to our console again and you can spec the element and go to console guys, okay? But I have the short, the key, there we go. I got the keyboard key for my Mac to do that. So I'm going to grab the VM, okay, I'm going to grab the font size, and I'm going to assign it to 100. Let's do, hundred pixels, let's do a hundred pixels, oops. I might I'm grabbing the wrong property I don't need this I just need a hundred VM is not defined okay sorry about that we need to sometimes you need to refresh this a couple times all right so font size a hundred enter and you can see that that changes to that size okay so sorry about that guys now that this is working let's go ahead and give you another example real quick on this lecture let's um, let's do an object we can pass a whole object to our style so I'm gonna do a style here actually it's this way okay now we did pass an object here, but we can pass an object from here. So if we had an object, for example, style object like this, with some properties, we can pass a whole thing to that style up there. So let's go ahead here and let's just say, I want the color to be, I don't know, um, blue. Blue, and I want the font size to be, let's make it enjoyable 10 pixels okay but let's put it in this 10 pixels like that and i want to pass a whole thing there come back here 
we don't even need curly brackets there. And what I'm going to do is, this is also going to be message. And let's refresh. Let's do another refresh. And you can see that that is kind of working, right? Let's do 30 pixels. Refresh a couple of times. And there we go. All right. Really awesome. Let's take this a little further. And let's create another style object. And I'm going to call this object number two okay and I'm gonna change this with yellow I'm gonna change the text to a hundred just to make it more noticeable I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna pass an array here okay so I'm gonna use square brackets like that and I got object number one which is of course style object and object style object number two, which is style object number two. I'm gonna refresh a couple of times here and now look at what happened. Really awesome, right? Now what's happening here is that style object number two is overriding some of the styles from style object number one. Okay, it's over overriding color, which is already here, and font size. Okay? All right, so I think you're good with these examples that I give, gave you. And let's take a look at classes. Next. Welcome back, my dear students. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today, we're going to be learning about class styling or class binding. It's going to be pretty awesome. All right, so let's get to it. Let's create a file. I'm going to, create, I'm going to do a save as on index like I do 99.9% .9 of the time. I'm going to call this class binding and styling or something like that how about that that html i don't know if i spelled that correctly but we'll find out <laughs> another time all right so um let's say for example and let's double click on that file make sure you do, that you do if you're not using an ide like me and let's see what we got all right, so let's say, for example, we want to style, and this is what they're good for. This class binding and class styling is good for, you know, in putting a class there when something is happening in your code. The same thing with styles, okay, but with classes, they are more useful. In my approach, personal approach, classes are more useful because you can just define the class, and we're going to, actually, we're going to do that right now. Okay, we can define the class up here, let's say a class of active. And um, put a color of uh, green, okay, and then do a not active class, and you're gonna put a color of um, red or something like that, okay. So let's just make this tight as possible. We can even put it in one line if we wanted to, okay. All right, I don't recommend this, but you're welcome to do it. All right, so if I were to add this class here and I refresh, you can see that that changes to green. Good stuff, right? And if I change this, I put the not active one, that changes to red. Good stuff. Let's just add a class that we don't have there because I want to show you something later. Um, static or something let's take that back to black so if we had a user let's just actually change this for uh, name and the name of this user was Edwin like me really cool guy I know him um, make sure that we change this too okay and we want to apply some type of color to indicate that this user is active. Maybe this was some type of round circle or something like that, but in this case, it's going to be a name. We can apply a property here. Say, hey, listen, if this user is active, we're going to apply that. We're going to apply the Boolean value true to that property. And here, 
we can bind we can use you know bbind class okay and I'm using the shorthand by the way and I can pass in some type of object to create some type of expression here to you know test to see if that user is active so I'm gonna communicate with this HTML element to my JavaScript right through this HTML to, uh, to my JavaScript so I'm gonna say here I want you to put the active class if is active it's present like that so now if I come here and I refresh you can see that that works now if I make this false this should stay black right awesome let's make that true okay so it stays green and what if I wanted to include maybe another one like an else statement or something or test another expression well I could say something like this if okay if it's not active let's actually create um, some another property here um, let's just go ahead and, do, and write it down here first this is the not active right here include the not active okay property uh, class if this user uh, if is act if is not is active okay something like that and if I do false and I click and I refresh you can see that that is applied automatically I was going to do another logic here but I think this was easy enough for you guys to understand it this uh, exclamation means the opposite of true which is false okay so we are including the not active if is active is false okay of course you can flip this around however you want you can also create some type of other property that makes more sense more sense uh, has error and you know put that to true and uh, you could come back here and you can say if that property is true then apply the red class which is stay it should stay the same okay so that's one way of doing that let's actually do another example real quick here I like to make my course lecture small but in this case oh and another thing before I forget let's inspect this and let me show you this class binding leaves the other classes intact and this is one of the reasons I left that static class there look at the static is there so it doesn't remove it or anything it just adds, adds classes to it okay it uses that JavaScript add class okay uh, commands so let's come back here and create another to show you another functionality that I like to use you can also include classes with an array like this you can bind them okay so you can use a whole expression here not just like this because like this looks a little weird and it might be a little hard for you guys to grasp for those of you that have used ternary operator you can do something like this if it's active include active else include uh, not active okay and of course you can pass in the name here again and you can see that that works the same there but we're using square brackets now and it's easier for those of you that know this syntax this is like an if statement in a way okay if is active include active else is the colon if it's not include not active it's shorter and for me it's a lot simpler than doing something like this right anyway thank you so much for watching guys I'm gonna leave it like this and I'll see you on the next lectures welcome back my dear students so in this lecture we're gonna be learning about the event binding it's gonna be pretty awesome okay so let's start in the index.html actually you know what let's actually use one of these files that we were using before let's use this binding styles binding inline styles.html 
And I'm going to call this event binding. Event binding and then styles. There we go. Make sure that you go to that same file. I'm going to delete this object right here. Make this a little smaller there. We're not going to need actually the style object either. So all we're going to leave is the font size there. Okay. And I'm going to leave this there. And I'm I'm going to create two buttons. But first we're going to create one and then we'll create the other one. Let's add a click event here. And now the way that we define methods in our view model, okay, is by creating this property or accessing this property called methods. This property is going to have an object as a value. And inside here you start creating your functions, your methods. And you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to use to call it increase font like this guys remember that you can also use um, this syntax I'll show you right now okay um, increase font and then pass in some type of function okay console.log and I'm just gonna say hi here just to show you that this works okay before we do anything else and then I'm gonna use the name of that method increase font I'm gonna pass it right here okay and that's just gonna console something out right now so it's not gonna do much let's actually make sure that we do have some type of uh, words there so we can see what's going on. Open your console. And if I click that, you can see that it says, you probably can't see it much. When I click it, it says H I hi. Okay, it's just separating it. This ng styles here is messing it up right now. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so that's working. Now let's actually do it the, the way that I like to do it by using not using that and using the new syntax stuff like that. Let's refresh it a couple of times, make sure that that's working, increase it. It does say the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this font size property and I'm gonna increase it. I want to increase my font every time I click on this button. I want to increase this. So I'm gonna make this small now. So refresh and that goes to being small and I want to increase this guy. Okay. Remember that when we're doing this, it, it does increases it everywhere. So I'm going to do this. That keyword, this means my view model. Okay. So I'm going to access something from my view model, which is called font size. And that something is a property right now. I'm going to access that and I'm going to do plus plus just to increase just one pixel at a time. I'm going to refresh and I'm going to do this and you can see that it's working beautifully. Okay. Look at that. Guys, awesome, right? Now, we're not going to leave, leave our users hanging with just increasing the buttons, increasing the font. Why don't we just make it so that they can decrease it as well? Okay. And this is going to call another function or method and that one is decrease like this okay and this is just gonna minus it okay so big small big small <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you get the point. Okay. Remember that you can always hook this up to maybe a input 
and you know hook it up with a v model there and type it in and increase the font size that way if you want to you can play around with it a lot by the time you finish this course you're going to know enough to start creating your own projects which is going to be really awesome thank you so much and i'll see you on the next lectures welcome back my dear students so in this lecture we're going to learn about conditional rendering okay or control structure or if statements whatever you want to call it it's functionality that allows us to hide or show data depending on a condition all right so in index.html do a save as and call this conditional rendering or call this if statements if you want guys and even if i make a mistake i'm not deleting this lecture because i already deleted like three lectures you know i don't know why they're coming up all oh, messed up i guess i gotta drink my coffee anyway so if i don't make any mistakes I stopped being myself, guys. And uh, lately I've been trying to be a little perfect, and that's not good because we're not perfect. But anyway, so I'm going to change this property, and let's make sure that we are in that file that we would like to be on. Let's create a property here called name because I want to give you an example with the name. Plus, I like this name that I'm going to be writing now. Do you guys guess the name that I'm going to write in this property? It starts with an E. All right, right, right. It's my name. You got it. Good job. You get an A at the, in the test, okay? Just because you got this. See, I give you A's really quickly. All right. So let's say, for example, our user is not active. And we don't want to show his name on our website, right? We don't want to because it's not active. Let's make sure that this is good here you see I already made a, a mistake there and I'm going to leave the lecture yes for those of you that don't like that all right so we use the v if here and we can say something like hey listen I'm gonna make another property here if the is active if the user is active we're going to show him if not we're not going to show him so we put a boolean value in this property and we can test it right here it's active of course this is not going to show you know that already right but this is how we do it and now simple guys you don't have to overthink it we also have a v else pretty awesome right we don't need to pass any arguments there we just we just got to say something like hey listen no user Make sure that we don't make a mistake this time. Look at that. No user. And guess what? We also have another. V else if. Oh, view JS. I am in love. I hope I hope he's a woman, not a guy, right? <laughs> I'm saying I'm in love with view JS, right? Um, so here we could, if we wanted to. Try to see if the name is equal to something. If the name is equal to Edwin, we can say something like, hey, hey, Edwin, what's up? Something like that. I don't know if I'm writing what's up right. Hey, Edwin, what's up? I'm going to refresh here. And OK, this is not working. Why is this not working? Oh, because the name is not as Edwin. It's Edwin Diaz right here. All right, so I'm going to put a space right here, and then I'm going to go ahead and do refresh. Oh, man. Look at that, guys. I want you to clap, put your hands in the ceiling, and say, party. We got it. So I hope you guys got it real quick. Um, and that's how we do conditional rendering. So if you look at this, now you know what it is. Thank you so much. I hope you had a good laughter, and I'll see you in the next lectures. Hi, welcome back, my dear students. So in this lecture, what I want to do is I want to show you how we do, how we loop in Vue.js, how we do list rendering. So I'm going to do a save as on this file, conditional rendering, and I'm going to call this uh, list rendering, just like this. Okay. Make sure that you are inside that file. I just changed it so with list rendering in Vue.js is super simple using Vue uh, list rendering so 
let's go ahead and create some data so that way we can render through it or loop through it. I'm going to create a post array just like this, empty array for now. And up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some type of list, an order list, and I'm going to give it just one list item. So the idea is this, we need to multiply our data, loop through our data and repeat the list items. We don't need to repeat the UL, right? They don't know the list. We just need to repeat the list items. So here's where we use our directive, V4, okay? But before we do that, let's go ahead and create some data so that way we can loop through it. So I got this empty array and I'm gonna have an ID. I'm gonna have a title and I'm going to have some type of body okay just like that let me just put some values in here and the title will be post one and maybe we have some type of words here let's put a comma here as well so let's copy this guy all right So ID number two, three, and four. Actually, that's okay. There we go. So now here we go and we use V4, okay? And we say post. This is a dynamic variable that, that Vue.js is creating for us when we do this. And we say in, this is a keyword that must be there. And post is the array down here is this data okay now we got to give you a key another attribute this is a built-in uh, directive that lets view know the identifier of our data and in this case our identifier is going to be the id of each post this just gives view more control and you know helps it individualize each of these objects Okay, so it just helps with processing a lot. So now that we have that, we can display our data. And I'm just going to display the post title just to give you an example here. Okay, now if we open our browser. I'm going to show you right now. As you can see, we have a loop. Okay, of course, you want to organize this maybe in a table or something like that. And if you had a table, for example, like this, you might want to multiply your rows. Okay, just to give you an example. So this is how we loop through data in Vue.js. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you in the next lectures. Welcome back, my dear students. So in this lecture, we're going to learn about computer properties. Now, there are times when you want to create some type of complex code right here and, you know, you want to take it down to your JavaScript. You can use methods or you can use computer properties. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a save as here and I'm going to do computed properties. Here we go. Hopefully I'm spelling it correctly. If I'm not, guys, forgive me. All right. So let's grab this code from a string interpolation here and let's place it right here and let's make sure that it is working there we go so let's look at how we can create computer properties right at below the data I'm going to create or input another property called computed it's gonna be an object and all we have to do here is give it a name just like we do with uh, methods like that and all this is going to be doing is returning some type of value okay you can come down here you can return this remember that we have to refer to this as this that message because we are inside our element our um, app or view model okay now 
to get the same functionality, all we got to do is refer to this name. We don't need the parentheses. Refresh, refresh, now refer. <laughs> there we go, guys. Super simple to create computed properties, okay? Remember to tighten up your code a little bit. Okay, make your code clean and nice. Welcome back, my dear student. So, in this lecture, we're going to learn about watchers. So, there are times when we need to keep an eye or we need to watch certain properties, certain stuff that's happening in our application or view model, right? With watches, we can just do that. For example, let's, let's actually go ahead and create a file real quick before we get into examples, right? So let's do this one. Let's call this watcher.html, okay? And let's say, for example, we have a property here called is active. Let me take this out from here. All right. So is active, and I'm gonna set this equal to active. Just the keyword, the word. And here, let's say we have a name Edwin Diaz. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to say, well. Um, if it's active, equal to active, I want to display user is active or is active. I know this seems a little confusing, but just stay tuned, okay? Stay there. And if it's not, then we're just going to say not active, okay? Just trust me, this is going to work, okay? Okay, it says Edwin Diaz not active, right? So that's pretty cool. Actually, active is with a V. There we go. And now if I do refresh, it says Edwin Diaz is active. Okay. So let's say, for example, we have this property and I can easily write a boolean value here but I wanted to actually write this because I'm gonna show you an example of, of something later on let's say for example we have a user that is registering in our app online and as soon as they register we you know we send them an email to register we, you know as soon as they register they click the email they go back to our site our app and then we go ahead and validate the user and turn this property into active right now it's not active not active okay so the user is not active let's refresh but when they click on that link from the email they get activated but we also want to send back an email to the user congratulating them from or thanking them for registering in our app for activating their account how can we keep a watch over this value right here? It would be nice that, you know, when we switch this to active, that we can send back a, the user an email. A functionality is activated once this switches. It would be nice if we can get a functionality. How can we do that? Well, with watchers. With watchers, you can set, you can use this property right here called watch. If I can spell it right, that would be nice. And it's an object. And inside here, you just use the same name as a property because you want to keep an eye or a watch for this. And you're going to execute a function as soon as something changes in that property. Okay? You can do whatever you want inside the function. I'm just going to be sending a message. We're going to make believe that we're going to be sending the user an email. Sending an email. So, right now, the user is not active. But as soon as the user is active, watch what's going to happen. Let's go ahead and use a variable name here to control our view model. And let's refresh. Right now, I'm going to do VM is active. I'm going to set this to active. Enter, and you can see that immediately something changes, I'm executing what's inside this function right here. I'm keeping an eye open for this guy. I'm watching it. 
But not only that, we can always we can also access the value of that property, whatever that value is at that time. So I can create any variable I want there, and I can concatenate it right here to show you guys new value. Okay, are you seeing this? I take it from here and put it right there. Now let's refresh this again. And now the user is not active. When I make him active, I'm sending an email and at the same time I'm accessing that property value. This so you can see it better. Enter right there. Okay. There we go. Look at the new value right here. So that's what a watcher is. Simple. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next lecture. Welcome back, my dear students. This course is getting exciting by the minute because right now we are about to learn about components, which is pretty cool. In most of these frameworks out there right now, Vue.js, Angular, Reactive, it's all about components. It's all about keeping some of our data in a separate way, in components. Each component could have their own functionality, their own scripts, their own styles, you name it, they have it, their own templates, basically their own HTML. And this is what it's all about with Vue.js, okay? We can have our own components. And I'm gonna demonstrate to you the syntax of it and how useful it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this components.html okay and let's go to that component and I didn't do a save as on that index guys okay just keep in mind that that index okay was supposed to be the computer the watcher right here this was supposed to be okay I'm just gonna take all this code make sure that my index is clean and small like it was before okay all right i just realized that so make sure that um this ide every time i do a save as it doesn't switch me to the file it's supposed to be switching me to so that's one of the reasons why sometimes i might override my index which i love very much anyway so <laughs> okay where were we Right, all right, right. I had to pause the video because I really blacked out. All right. So in components, uh, this is not what I want. I want my index in components right here. And I'm going to show you how to register a global component, okay, which is going to be pretty, pretty cool. So right here we have our instance, okay, our VM or view model. And now it's time for us to register some type of component. And we do this by accessing this view, that component like this. Okay, now you're gonna give your component some type of element name. Let's say for example, I'm creating a component about posts like this. Okay, and then the second parameter here that we're gonna give our component method here would be the type of data well not data the type of metadata that we want in that component for example I can give my component a template I'm gonna use backticks to give it some data okay and I'm gonna say hello here and now if I come to my app up here and I say pose like that you see this this name becomes this tags up here okay now if I go and render this you can see that it says hello and if I change this you can see that we are changing that file okay so look how easy it was we still have our view model here with data and whatever but we can always go ahead and create separate components and guess what we can keep this anywhere we want 
We don't even have to have this template here. Later on, I'll show you how to create other things with it. Okay? So this is how we create components. In the next lecture, we're going to talk a little bit more about components. See you then. Welcome back, my dear students. So in this lecture here, I want to explain a little bit about inline templates because right now we are creating a template with this component inside here, this here, backticks. And that's pretty awesome. And you're gonna see you're gonna see this a lot. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a save as a component, and I'm gonna do components hyphen inline like this dot HTML. Okay, I'm gonna go to my I'm gonna double click on that file, make sure that I'm there because you know how my ID plays around with me. All right. So let's say for example you don't want this to be here. What you can do is you don't even have to define a template there but you can define an inline template here, okay? So all you gotta do is give it some type of attribute here called inline template, like this. And now what's inside here becomes your data, okay? See that? That's what inline template is. Pretty, pretty awesome. Now, let me show you how you can get data inside your component. For example, if we want a click event here, I can say click and, you know, I want to activate some type of function and I'm going to say it's going to be called display or something like that. Okay, we're not going to be doing things here anymore because we have a component. Okay, in our component, we have this data object that needs to return another object okay and this is how we are going to be actually this data is not a property it is a function and this is going to return data in our component here but not only data we can also get methods okay so let's come back here and we also have methods in there and we're going to get our display method okay um, let's just go ahead and make sure that it's doing something console.log and we're going to call this hello okay so now reflect refresh now refresh <laughs> and when I click on it it says hello okay Pretty awesome, right? So we are executing, we, are, we got an inline template, we got a click event there, and we got the methods in there. Really awesome. See you in the next lecture, guys. Take care. Welcome back, my dear students. So in this lecture, we're going to take a look at how we can communicate or take data into our components, actually, from the outside. So we saw how we were able to take data from the inside of a component or actually execute some type of method from inside a component okay we were able to do that now in this lecture here we're going to take a look on how we can display data in our components and how to take data from the outside to the inside so i'm going to do a save as on components inline and i'm going to call this components data like this let's make sure that we go to that file and it's not Dera. I call it Dera. I don't know Dera. Do you know Dera? Okay. <laughs> Forget about my silly me, guys. All right. So I'm going to take this template out of here because um, we don't use templates like that. It's very rare that we do in view. And what we do is we use it here or we use a separate file for it. So back ticks. There we go. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put my back ticks down like that and put that there so now if I render this you can still see the nonsense of hello there <laughs> all right let's open our console real quick click it and you can see that that still works okay so now if we want data in that view we can display data just like we used to before message uh, Hello, Edwin. 
okay and now here we could display that message right pretty awesome hello Edwin there we go really cool stuff right and then of course we get that click event happening so we get everything the same here so like I mentioned before how can we take data from the outside of a component from here let's say we have an ID somewhere and we need to take this ID and use it inside our components well we bind it we can use let's say for example the data attribute here and we can take an ID of let's say 34 we just use the bind the B bind and then here what we do is we create a props we're not creating this exists already a props property with an array syntax and we give it a name of whatever data we're taking in so this attribute name is data so I'm just gonna do that of course we gotta use the same name here so data refresh and voila that's how we take data from the outside to the inside of our components awesome so now you know how to display the internal data and also how to get data from the outside inside your components pretty awesome guys take care and see you in the next lecture Did somebody say nesting I think it was you okay yes I'm talking to you dear student you listening to me today we're gonna to be learning about nesting components it's gonna be a pretty awesome awesome lecture now let's go ahead and create a do a save as on this components data and let's just do components and what was the thing that we were doing nesting yes good job guys good job reminding me all right <laughs> let's go over here guys don't 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 worry about my silliness I try to make you laugh and wake up I know some of you are sleeping so let's go ahead and create a component here I'm gonna this component let's give it some data I'm gonna take that off you know what we don't need any of this stuff here uh, we do need a template but we don't need props so what I'm gonna do here in the template and one thing that I want you guys to understand in a template if for some reason the code doesn't work for you make sure you have some right type of root element first okay a root element like this like diff and you know the closing diff whatever and then inside your template then you have the rest of the code okay because this might not work if you don't have a root element I know I think I got stuck in that when I first started with Vue.js that was uh, some time ago but anyway so what I want to do is I want a list of posts but before we do that I want something like this let me show you the the only thing I don't like about this back ticks in my IDE is when I'm trying to indent my code really well it doesn't work all right so I want something like that with you know the title like post one you know something coming from the database but I want to use components and I also don't have that data so we need to have those two things okay oh, I don't like this let's just do this real quick oops all right there we go all right okay each ID has their own way of doing things anyway so I'm gonna take this off and I'll just leave one okay and in the data I'm going to create a post array like this and in this post array we're gonna have different objects It's gonna have they each gonna have an ID and each of them is going to have some type of title in this case they're going to be post one and I'm going to do command well I'm going to copy and paste all of them like this oops that's enough give it a different name 
and five. This is five, four, three, two, one. Boom! Explode. All right. So now, what I want to do is I want to display a pose for each of these objects. We don't have a post component. We do have a post component which has the S, right? We do have that. But it would be nice to have another component just to hold this each individual post. Okay? So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to make this guy in charge of everything else. This post component is going to have the other one embedded inside. And we are going to be doing that right now. So instead of this LI, okay? Instead of the LI being here, we are going to make it so it's available somewhere else. Okay, so it's going to be post. But we don't have that component yet, right? So we, we need to make that component. Let's come back to the end of this guy right here. And let's create that component. View that component. And it's going to be post like this. Now, that second parameter here, this is going to confuse you a little bit, but don't worry, I'm here for you. And it's going to be a template, but what we want for the template for this component, what the only thing that we want this component to have to be is an li, li tag, okay? But now, we need to tell view that whatever data comes in between this component, okay, it's this data right here. So how can we make sure that, okay, view knows that whatever comes here comes from this guy right here? Well, we use what's called slots, like this, okay? And all it is is that whatever data we're going to put in between these components, between here, is going to be the same data here. That's all slots are, okay? So now what I want to do in this post is a V4. Okay. So I want to loop through my post. I want to create a post variable in post. Okay. And then I want to pull out the post title from it. I explain to you how everything works. I know this might look a little confusing, but I will explain it to you, okay? So let's go back here and let's try to see if we get something here. Okay, post title, things are not coming out. Let's see the error that we get. I got a pretty good common idea as why. Right now it says view common is not a function. View, because I misspelled view component right here. You probably saw that. And now let's go back here and refresh and now we can see each of our posts. Pretty awesome. Okay. Now, one warning here that it's giving us, and I wanted to tell you about this, is that when you're rendering lists, it's, it's telling us that we should explicitly, explicitly, okay, define the keys. Okay. So, what they want, what Vue.js want, is for us to let them know about each individual component. Like what makes this component different than the rest? Or, I mean, this individual object. What makes this object different from the rest of the objects? And if you notice, the IDs are different, right? So we can tell Vue, listen, the key of this component, and we can we can bind it like this. The key of this component, because it's expecting that key uh, binding, it's expecting it. The value of that is the post ID. That is the difference between each of these objects. So now view is not gonna have a problem with us. They're not even gonna give us any warning or anything. See that? Awesome. So now let's recap on what we did, okay? All right, so we created the main component post, right? We gave it a root element. We got a UL 
okay, another list here. And we have this post component that we created down here. And this post components template is just an LI, LI, or list item. Okay. Now we inserted the slots here. This is a predefined element or tag in Vue.js to define any data that goes in between the component itself. Okay, we can create slots anywhere. Okay, it's just a way of saying, listen, whatever data you put here in between me, it's the data that should go in between here. Okay, because remember, we are using the slots right here. If I take this off and I do refresh, now the slots are not going to have anything. I mean, the LI, because right now, we can't put any data here unless we tell Vue.js that we want data. The only way to tell Vue that we want data is by putting slots. Right now, if I put this data in this template, in this component, that's the data that it's going to show. You understand? So we need to put slots to make that data dynamic and to tell Vue.js that is this data that we want, the one in between the opening and the closing post tag. Okay, and then we're using the four, okay, to render each of these objects. We're making a dynamic variable in post, in the, in the array post, and we're giving it a key, an identifier to let Vue.js know that each of these objects are different and it should treat them differently. So we get, we're giving Vue.js more information and it doesn't complain and then we're using this variable here dynamic variable to pull out the title of each object and we're getting those values there super simple guys thank you so much and i'll see you in the next lecture welcome back my dear students so in this lecture here in this first lecture i'm going to be you know explaining a couple things that we're going to be needing to create really cool projects with Vue. So, in order for us to create really cool Vue.js applications with separate components like Angular or React, we need a couple tools, okay? So the first tool that we need to have, and you need to do that with Angular and React and all that stuff, is to have some type of manager that will allow us to download packages, JavaScript packages, right? For that, for those of you that know about it, we have Node, right? So if we go to Node, .js.org, okay, Node.js.org, you can download this runtime for JavaScript. Node.js, for those of you that don't know, allows us to run JavaScript in the server or have, you know, a server built with JavaScript, okay? So this is what a lot of developers use to create what's called a mean stack, okay? MongoDB, uh, Express, Node, and Angular, okay? This is the stack, one of the stacks. So download this, I already have it, I'm not going to download it. Download it and set all the default features when you download it and when you use an installer. Make sure you have that and that's going to bring along the NPM, no package manager that we are going to be using to download the CLI. So let's come back here. And this is the CLI. Now the CLI is going to allow us to you know, create a view project that's going to have all the stuff that we need to make really cool applications. It's going to have separate components capability. It's going to have the node modules folder or, you know, available to us so that way we can include all the packages with NPM. It's going to have a lot of things and I'm going to go through the structure of that Vue.js application once it builds it. Now, Vue, uh, the CLI here, the program that we're going to be downloading with uh, NPM, it's also going to have a command that we can execute and make things a lot easier for us, okay? But as you can see here, let's see if I'm in the right page though. Actually, I'm not in the right page. Let me go to the right page. All right, right here. Okay, Vue.js, that's github.com, Vue.js slash view hyphen CLI. You can see that we need to use NPM, okay, once you download Node, use npm installed hyphen g to you know create 
this globally to install it in your computer. Okay? Once you do that, then you can create a project. You can see here that it says view create my project. This is the 3.0. And let's go back here real quick. All right. So now let's go. Once you have Node installed, make sure that you go and open your command prompt. For some of you using Windows, I recommend downloading Git. Git is a version control little software that's pretty cool. And it also has a shell that we can use. They're very similar to the Mac operating system. Okay. So you download that and open it up and you're going to see like a little terminal like this It's going to be black and it's, it's going to be better than the command prompt. So once you download it, make sure that you have it installed, uh, have node installed and you do node V. Okay. in your command prompt or terminal in the Mac, it's going to give you the version number. Okay. Of course, NPM is also installed when you download view, I mean, M uh, node. Okay, and you can just check for view as well. But for view, we need to download it first, right? I already have it, so mine's gonna work out of the box. But I'm gonna download it. And for those of you using um, a command prompt or Git in the Windows operating system, make sure that you know. For some of you, I think it's gonna ask you to. It's gonna block you, block access to it. You can try it. You can try this command on your command prompt. If it doesn't work and it gives you an error. Right click on that command prompt and run it, run another shell like this as an administrator. Okay. And for us Mac users, make sure that you run as an administrator as well with sudo. Put your password. Okay. And that should install it globally. We're going to find out in a minute if it's installed. All you got to do right now is do view just like that. And it's going to give you a whole bunch of ways to use it okay and right now it's telling us hey listen you can create a project by doing create by doing this command create you can add a plugin you can invoke inspect build init this init command is going to allow us to use some type of template because if we do view create that's not going to have all everything we need that's just to create like a really simple plain application with nothing in it we need a couple other things to make this work. So with Vue.js, in order for us to create like components like Angular and React, we need Webpack to help us bundle all the JavaScript code. Okay. And he also uses Babel. Okay. Babel like this. Babel. Okay. Uh, all right, so you also use, use this a plugin for Webpack. So uh, Babel is, is good for uh, modern or new ES6 features. That's going to process all the ES6 features into, it's going to transpile the new features into ES5, into the older features. So that way all browsers can understand the JavaScript that we are writing, okay? Because we write a lot of new, new, uh, new JavaScript when we're doing uh, Vue.js, okay? So, but don't worry about downloading Webpack or Babel. That's the reason why we're using the CLI because the CLI is going to have all that for us. Okay. So let's go real quick and use that. And if I do, let's, let's create a folder right here on the desktop real quick. Make sure that you download everything I told you to. And make sure that Node is installed. I'm going to create a folder called View Apps. And I'm going to go to that folder. You can follow me. It's the same thing for Windows. So open your command prompt and you do CD. If you're using Git and the little, um, it's not tilde, it's the back tick or tilde key by the escape key. And then you do capital desktop, press tab to auto complete, and then go to view apps. There we go. And in here you do view init, and then the template name. And then whatever project you want to, you want this to be called. I'm going to call it demo. And it says view requires a add-on, global add-on. Get this uh, issue here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this command here. I don't know. And let's try that. All right, look at that. That's working. 
Okay, just try this command view hyphen init. I don't know for what reason view init like this is not working. So I'm going to press enter, enter, enter as my name already and enter view router. Uh, you know what? No, I'm going to show you how we can play around with that later and lint. No, no, no. And it says use uh, NPM. I'm going to press enter on that and it's going to finish installing that project. Okay, on the next lecture, I will explain to you the structure and everything and how it works. Okay, remember to install those files that I told you about. Okay, the node, the git, bash, or the shell. Okay, so that way you can make things work. All right, so now if you click on that folder, you should have this a whole bunch of folders and files. Let's get go ahead and open that up in some type of editor or IDE. Okay. View apps and then I'm going to open it up in my web storm right here. Make this a little smaller. Okay. And you should have something like this. On the next lecture, I'm going to go through all the structure here, almost all of it, because we don't need to know all of it, but I'm going to go through the main things of the structure and I'm going to explain it to you so you have a better understanding. See you in the next lecture. Welcome back, my dear students. So in this lecture, I'm going to go over some of the things, you know, that this CLI does for us with this file structure. And I'm going to go through the file structure here. So we created this project with the CLI, a command line interface, and they created all these folders for us. Now, keep in mind that it configured a lot of things for us as well. For example, it configured um, Babel and it also configured Webpack. Remember, Webpack is going to bundle all our files. And Webpack is a program that is going to have other plugins, like the view loader in this case, which is going to be responsible for the view loader is going to be responsible. I'm going to show it to you right now. Right here, the. CSS loader, the view loader right here. This plugin for Webpack is going to be responsible for compiling the uh, view components. Our view, com our components are going to be in a separate file now. They're going to have a view, a dot view extension. I'm going to show them to you in a minute. And this view loader is going to be responsible for, you know, processing that file. And uh, we also have the Babel, okay? So the Babel loader is going to help us transpile the ES6 JavaScript features into ES5 so other browsers can understand it. So these are the main plugins that Webpack is going to have. The Webpack is doing a lot of things behind the scenes, guys, a lot of things. So once you have this folder, once you are inside this folder, you, you can see that I am, just execute npm install, okay? And then once you do npm installed, you're going to do npm run dev. That is going to run our development small server, all right? It's going to act like a server. It's going to allow us to see our project in the browser. Okay, just like that. Oops, what in the world did I do? Just because I didn't want to type. I'm becoming so lazy. Let's come back here. You can see our server right here. You can see our application. Okay? So, Real quick, we can also also run npm run build. These are the scripts right here in this package.json. For those of you that don't know about npm, npm is going to have a package.json with all our dependency, a reference to all our dependencies that we are going to be needing. Okay, it's gonna download all these dependencies inside this no modules folder. And then we can do imports and refer to those dependencies, those packages in our program. You're going to see that later on. Okay. So when we do npm run, we are executing these scripts right here. Right now we're going to be executing build. Build is going to run this file with node. Okay. npm run build is going to create. You're going to see this in a minute. 
All right, don't make me look bad in front of my students. Let's see, let's see what it's gonna do. All right, I'm gonna pause it and come back, guys. All right, MPN. It's build, let's try this again. I don't know why my ID is playing tricks on me like this. All right, MPM run build like this. There we go. Now, we are gonna get this folder, it's going to be a distribution folder. Now what it's doing is it's grabbing everything in your application and it's compiling it, okay? It's grabbing everything that it, want, that it needs. And let me see if I can find the webpack config here. I thought it was inside here. There we go. This one here, this template, and each template is going to have the Webpack config and, and a different file in different folders, all right? Not every template is the same. Remember that the template that we are using, that we based our project on, is called Webpack. We, all, we also have other templates, like Webpack Simple, okay? There are other templates that we can use. Anyway, so the, in the Webpack configuration file, you're going to find that it says, it's going to give you, it's going to say all this, it's going to have all these requires, but the main thing that it's going to be doing is going to, to go inside the main.js, which is our main file, okay, it's located right here, okay, it's going to grab the information, this is the, the component, the app component, okay, if you go to index, this app, okay, right here, this thing here, it's right here is we're getting injected we're getting this it's picking that up right with the element that we learned before and it's injecting this component which is becoming a tag element okay a html element like this in reality that's becoming something like that but it's being injected okay that's just a little newer configuration there see that that's going to be the template it's going to be injected that's what it's doing, okay? And of course, once it injects that component, that's the app component, add that view, which is right here, okay? Now, you can see the component is app.view. This is a new extension. That's why we need the view loader in Webpack, okay? Each component, each file is gonna be a component. And it's going to have this template here to have our HTML, and then it's going to also have a script tag that is going to always be exporting something out an object of course if you want to use other components or anything else inside that component you need to import it right here below right inside the script tags and then we're also going to have our styles so in this case we are always going to be styling our components right here let's say if you put scoped this attribute here is going to allow us to have these styles only apply to our component. So every component has its own template or every file has its own template, its own scripts and its own styles, okay? And every time we create a component, we give it a dot view extension. Got it? Super simple, guys. And the only file that when we go online that is getting executed on the browser is when we do npm run build it's going to be this index right here. And this index, of course, has connected these files, the CSS and the JavaScript. So every time we run npm run build, it builds everything that we have written in our development application. It puts it in this folder, and we can go ahead and drop that folder inside some type of hosting. And that's what's going to execute our files. Okay? That's what's going to show in our browser to the main.js right here one thing that I wanted to show you is that this is the same thing right here this import is the same thing as having the script the script tag okay remember the view script tag that we got from the CDN in their website this is the same thing as having that and of course this is importing the whatever is getting exported from the app component okay from the app view okay remember that this is the what's getting exported out right here this app okay right here and that variable is going to have our app and we're passing it down to component okay 
and that's go that's creating our component all right so anyway I think that's the main things that you guys need to learn you know for what's happening okay just a little recap if you want to listen to it you can if not just go to the next video okay so we're using webpack with view loader Babel, and some other plugins to compile our files from ES6 to ES5 and to also you know convert our dot view files okay and we have a dot view file right here actually our dot view files into JavaScript stuff and CSS and it's going to be the view load is going to be doing a couple of things once it does all that stuff we can run npm run build right and take all that stuff into our CSS and JavaScript and then link everything in that index.html. It's just super simple guys. It's just doing a lot of things behind the scenes. Okay. And this of course is configuration files that we don't need to worry about right now. This is all our dependencies right here. Okay. Some configuration files for production and development. Okay. And our build file where it keeps all the builds. Anyway, thank you so much guys for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture. All right, welcome back, my dear students. So it's time for us to start creating a component, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, right here in source, go to components and right click on it or whatever you wanna do, and let's create a component called post.view. Remember, this is gonna be the component. Like I mentioned before, each of them is gonna have a template and you need to write this tag. And it's going to have a script and it's also going to have some type of style like that okay so the template needs to have some type of root element unless they change it in the future sometime I'm recording this video it still does need some type of root element and I'm just gonna say hello from here I'm gonna write a script here what we need to have is some type of uh, export here okay so we're gonna say export default and in here we can have whatever we want we want to export data or we want to export methods whatever we want to export we can export it right here so usually we export the template but we have the template up here so we don't need to do that no more now it's the data and we can export it doing something like that right but we're going to be using the new syntax of es6 going to take advantage of that to make it clean and we're going to be returning the a function okay so that's the first thing and when we return this function well this function is going to return an object actually like that okay so that's how it usually is we got the template we got the scripts and everything we want in between right well we got the styles too but now in order for this component to work you have to create a give it a selector we haven't given it a selector we need to give it a selector and we need to register it so the way we give it a selector is by accessing this name property here and let's call this post like this let's call I'm gonna call it post like this example because I want to show you something okay now this is going to be of course the the element okay that we are exporting out of here right so we need to go to app view to register that element so that way we can show it because let me show you in our demo let me see if I have it right here this component is the app view okay that's where everything is getting this is the main component here app view this is where we need to register the other components so that way we can show it for example this component right here hello world is right here that's the component that's actually on the first on that page you see that it says ecosystem here and if you look at it it says ecosystem somewhere right here so this is the hello world application add view is just that like a placeholder type of guy that is gonna take all the rest of the components so we need to register a component I'm gonna register right here I'm gonna change this to the name of our file which is gonna be post we don't need a view and here we give it the name that we're using, which is gonna be, oops, <laughs> let me not be lazy and write it down. 
uh, post example and down here I'm gonna say post example now here's the thing when you want to write your tag your element tag or your HTML tag well it's 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 this custom tag right you can write it in different ways you can write it like this now let's make sure that we're running our npm run dev okay all right so you can have your element just written just like that okay and if you notice that's the, very similar to what we got here now this one is strange right this is just one um, one element here so that's another way of writing it let's come back here let's refresh and you can see that down here says hello right you see that hello that's why we are we can take all that out from we can take this hello world out from here this is supposed to refresh and now you can see that it says hello great stuff let's take this image out of there too come back there hello nice right and this is refreshing this is the hot reloading webpack is actually uh, doing helping us do all that stuff with the plugins so this is one way of writing your custom element but you can also write it like this post hyphen example like that and now when it reloads you can see that that still works okay and now that's pretty cool now you can also take the, all this out do a forward uh, forward slash here let's cross our fingers that is reloading on the back and as you can see that works as well my preferred way, way of is actually having this okay now you have to register you can be using this type of syntax here as you can see that's not allowed you don't want to do that you can use the camel case here and use the kebab or kebab I think it's called kebab I, I know how to say it in Spanish but I can't say it in English um, style okay with a hyphen pretty awesome so now that's how you register component guys see you in the next lecture welcome back my dear students so what I want to do is I want to actually do some a little bit more complex stuff here for you you know just to give you guys an example how all of this is put together and works so what I want to do is you know install bootstrap so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do control C clear my terminal I'm gonna do npm install boost bootstrap this is just gonna help us you know uh, style or HTML and CSS a lot better it's just gonna have a lot of classes for us to use which is pretty cool so this is gonna be installed in a no modules folder and we can use the app that view this main component here to actually um, let's take this scoped out of here this is come back here and I'm gonna do an, an import this is just going to import my the styles from the node modules folder or from whatever I want in this case it's going to be importing it from there to here okay so we need to go to that folder here to make it work so let's go out and more modules and bootstrap distribution CSS bootstrap that men okay so now we need to make sure that this is working guys let's make sure that you run npm dev run dev here and let's go to our posts and let's create some type of button here button that btn dot btn primary this is just a class a bootstrap class to make this look nice and I'm just gonna call it click so it's gonna have a btn and then another class of btn hyphen primary and let's go to our I don't have it there let's go to our demo real quick there we go so it looks like bootstrap is working awesome so now what I want to do is check I'm gonna put this in another what I want to do is I want to check for some type of um, navigation bootstrap navigation bootstrap nav 
and this is bootstrap 4.4.0 I think this is gonna do for us right something like that let's copy this let's go and uh, let's see where we're gonna we can put this navigation this is gonna be navigation for the whole thing so I'm gonna go to the app that view and right here in my app above everything I'm gonna place that navigation okay because I want this navigation to be available to everything to everybody to every page or whatever I'm going to be creating in my site now this is going to we have some type of margin in our app let's see this margin top right here is messing things up let's take this style out of here we don't need that right come back here and there we go this is not working of course because we need we would have to import our JavaScript files okay now if you want to add to JavaScript you can go ahead and add it right here if you want uh, not there but your last file could have a CDM somewhere okay or to work on it you might want to add it in the let's see right here you can add it per component if you like on top okay you can import it for, by component or let's see where is it I think I lost it right here right here you can add it here before you end the body of this so that way you can play around with it in your JavaScript okay but anyway um, we adding it right here so we can play a little bit around this is not a complete complete Vue.js course I just want to give you an idea how this is done okay so once we have bootstrap and we have a navigation let's go back to to what we got here okay now we need some type of data okay and um, we are in the post right here so if I create some type of um, property here like this okay and we want to display it let's um, come back here ID let's just say one title post one I'm just gonna leave it like this and four three and four okay so that's ready and get a table or something for a bootstrap bootstrap table uh, again this is a uh, 4.0 bootstrap table I'm just gonna take this striped one here and I'm gonna add it to my posts let's come back here and we have this table here let me make this smaller okay let's put some margin on top of our table I believe we can and we will add a margin right here say M T4 that's margin top let's see if that works all right that did not work MT actually MT hyphen 4 there we go that works that that just gives a little and let's give the side a little padding too so this rule element let's see if we can put a class here call this container this is all bootstrap classes just make things look nice okay all right so we're done creating our navigation our table here and we need to start displaying some data so how can we do that well we can say v if and let's actually take the other tables out of here the, the other rows table rows okay and we, our heading is gonna be an ID and title 
We should actually have a body, right? Let's have a body. Why not? I have a body. Do you have a body? <laughs> and let's come back here and say, well, we want to display the ID. What is this? The well, let's first create the this is gonna be post dot ID and you're gonna see that in a minute when we create our loop and post dot title and post dot body. All right, and here we create a loop. Actually, nope, that's not where we create the loop. We create the loop right here. B4. And when I say post in post, we're going to give this guy a, the key like we've done before. Post.id. And sorry, guys, I had to pause the video. I had somebody come in the room. Um, so let's come back here and let's create a body real quick just because I want this to have some type of data here make sure we put this here and I'm just gonna put a little space there okay let's organize this a little bit put a space right there all right that looks good even though there's a lot of jargon there, a lot of stuff that we don't want. ID. All right, that looks good. Let's see what um, our servers have. Localhost 80. There we go. That's how it looks right now. So on the next lecture, we're going to actually create this a little better in a different way. And I'll see you then, guys. Take care back my dear students so what I want to do is I want to replace this static data with maybe some API data okay so we, we need to actually look for that API um, I believe and I don't know if it's still they still working I mean you know after a while this websites will uh, replace be replaced so look for maybe um, just to be safe you know um, API dev data or something like that or HTTP like that okay and in that way you can find some some places where you can test your your HTTP request so we're gonna be replacing our static data with some dynamic data okay with with some data from an API and you can you can also look for fake online rest API for developers Look for that search term on Google and you can find something else if JSON placeholder is not available. Okay, this is the website and we want to make a request to this API right here to get all this data. Okay, as you can see, this has a user ID, ID, title, and body. So let's make sure that our table has that. User ID, ID, and I copy that. And I think it has title and body. And what I'm going to do with this data here, um, I'm going to leave that as an empty array. I wanted to show you how to do it statically just in case you guys are not able to connect to this API. We're going to be using a HTTP, which is going to be awesome, okay, for you guys to learn this extra stuff. I'm, you know, I'm just adding things to this course so that way you guys can learn more about Vue.js. Remember, this is a crash course. This is not a complete course. So don't, I don't want to see a review, a bad review saying that I didn't include something here and you're upset. This is a crash course. You're supposed to show you the main components of Vue.js. I think we already did that. I'm just creating extra things here for you. Okay. So be appreciative, guys. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create I'm going to add a HTTP request, but before we do that, we need to download some type of package to do that because we don't have that. So I'm going to do npm. I'm going to download HCS right here, this package. npm. 
okay this is an HTTP client um, promise based so you can use promises which is really awesome okay so M npm install HCOs and it's super easy to use okay let's download it keep in mind that my speed is like 150 megabytes per second in this office here that I'm using my house is a thousand so if it takes a while for you don't worry or maybe you guys have a faster speed than me so what I'm gonna do in my after my data function here I'm going to attach um, this created what you call it lifecycle console.log remember about the life cycles of Vue.js so Vue.js just in case you guys life cycle uh, this is a life cycle I think this is just a, some type of forum here but anyway these are life cycle hooks There is, it's, it's, it's somewhere in here, okay, you can find it. I'm pretty sure the documentation has it somewhere, lifecycle diagram right here, okay. Before created, created, you can hook into this to do different things. Before mount, mount it. So in this create a lifecycle, let's see if I can hook into that. npm run dev to run my server, okay. let's go back here and it's saying it is connected you can see that it is connecting here all right so we are connected to that life cycle and um, so once our components created and everything is going we're gonna make a ACS actually we need to import ACS to make sure that it works so right here this is gonna be a new thing for you we're gonna import HCOs from the no modules folder. Remember that when you do it like this, H, uh, with no dot forward slash right here like this, you are importing from the no modules folder without the, when you do dot this, it means that you are importing from your local directory somewhere. Okay, keep that in mind. So we are importing HCOs, now we can use it. Let's, do axios and uh, it's a get that we're doing because we want some data and now we need to put the address as the first parameter and let's get the address of that data I'm gonna get the address right there on the URL I'm gonna put some quotes here to put it in strings then we're gonna get a promise right then and it's gonna be post like this I'm using ES6 syntax here okay this can also be a function you can also do it like this just in case you see it somewhere okay or like this I'm using ES6 we are returning just one value from there which is gonna do that and then I'm going to assign this to my post array and what I want to assign is the post that data. That's the object that I want. You can also always do a console.log on what you're getting here. You can do a console.log here and see where you have to pull the data from. I know that I'm pulling the data from this data property here or, or object, I believe. Okay. That data array or I think it's an array. It's this big guy right here. But anyway. Um, let's see if that's working already. Refresh. All right, it's not working because post is not defined. I misspelled this somewhere. It says po post right here. All right, now let's go ahead and there we go. Beautiful, guys. Now we're getting data from an API, which is really awesome, right? Look at that. You guys did not think that I was going to show you how to do this, right, in this lecture here? In this course even though this is a crash course I'm including a lot of stuff here for you guys I want to include the user ID here because we're missing that user ID I think there we go and I 
think is the ID and then the user ID. The ID, user ID, title, and body. And it has an extra. There we go. Ah, there we go. That looks a lot better here. Nice, 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 nice. Let's work on the navigation. Let me show you how you, how you guys can do that as well. We're not going to go through the all the the uh, the rest of the Vue.js stuff because it's a lot. This is a crash course, but it's a lot of other things that you guys can learn about Vue.js. I'm showing you the main components. Like I, like I said before, this is just a crash course so to get you going with Vue.js. See you in the next lecture. Come back, my dear students. I hope you guys are having a lot of fun. Let's continue with our lecture. Now, what I want to do in this particular lecture is build some type of navigation system. I think uh, one of the main, comp main components of Vue.js is the router. So let's get to it. So with the router, we need to download. So turn off your server, um, Control-C. Let's do npm installed view router like this, view hyphen router. Okay, it's going to install that package. And the view router, what is it going to allow us to do is to switch the data, okay? Every time we click on a link or we go to a different URL, the JavaScript is going to detect that URL and it's going to, we're going to associate that URL with a component. So it's going to switch our components. So if I click on the home, that JavaScript is going to detect that URL, it's going to detect that string, and it's going to take me to that component if I associate it with it, okay? Whatever component has the home data. That's why it doesn't need to refresh a page because it's JavaScript, it's just switching data. It's not refreshing or making a new request, okay? So, um, let's clear this out and let's make sure that we run npm run dev. And let's go to our main.js file. This is where we are going to be registering our router. This is the main file, guys. Okay. So we're going to do import view router with an uppercase view and then the second word uppercase as well. The second router from the Node.js folder. And that's why we don't use the dot. Hi, uh, forward slash because it's in the node node modules folder okay sorry so now that we have the router we need to tell view to use it let's use it right here and we pass it in here view router there we go I'm gonna put a semicolon even though it's not needed I like to put semicolons on when I'm finished okay so now let's construct our routes. We're going to build, we're going to contain our routes in a constant, which is, this is, you know, the reason why we use constants, and this is a new ES6 feature is so the value doesn't change. The value is not going to change. You can use a constant. It's the same thing as a variable. I mean, as a declaration of let and var, but it's not, um, it's not global like, the, like var. It's not the same thing as var. It's similar because it's a variable, but it's constant. It's not the value, you cannot change the value. So we have an array and we have an object here and each object is going to have a path property. We tell it where we want our component to be and then we tell it the component that is going to be loading with a component property and we want it to load the post component but we have to import that. So let's go ahead and import that up top and post from, this is our own file, so it's in components, post. Oh, the semicolon thing. I'm so used to it. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it off, okay. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm learning, guys. I'm learning myself to not put the semicolon. It's a bad habit that I got, okay. Um, it's telling me that I cannot resolve files. So if I do view, let's see if it if I if it takes that or no. It's let's see components and posts. It should work. Uh, let me see. Actually, let me see. This is actually in the same. No, it's not in another directory. It's not in the components directory, is it? 
Yeah, it is. Sorry about that. It is. It is in the component directory. I just can't find it for some reason. Oh, we're missing an S. Still, no, no, no. Um, it's there, guys. It's there. There we go. Let's just do it like this. Even though it should work like this. Okay, let's just um, let's do it like this. I think it's not gonna work the other way. This is actually uh, Babel using these features here. So. Anyway, uh, we'll find out if it works without it. Uh, I thought that it, 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 it don't it don't it don't need it. I, that's what I thought. So let's um, check it. Now the next thing to do would be to register it down here, but we need to create. We need to do one more thing. All right, let's create another variable here. Let's instantiate the view router, and we're gonna pass in our route to this guy right here and our routes to a property called routes we're going to pass our routes okay don't confuse that it's a property here that it's supposed to have and we're going to pass our routes now this view router right here or this router constant we got to pass it in right here now we can pass it in like this or we can use the new es6 shorthand by just doing that and the reason why we can do that is because they both have the same name. Okay, well, guys, remember that I have an ES6 course, just in case you guys want to get up to date with that. Anyway, um, this should work. Put the semicolon there. <laughs> All right, let's. So we are right now. If you saw how that changed, uh, go rewind the video a little bit. You can see that forward slash hash and the forward slash. That means it has changed. So in the next lecture, we'll finish this up and um, and show how we can click on our navigation and switch to components. Okay, but that hash symbol that we had in the URL, the hash or the number symbol, whatever you want to call it, means that our router is installed. We're going to make sure that it works 100% on the next lecture. Thank you, guys. Let's go ahead and um, let's take all these things out. Let's go ahead and create some type of navigation here, okay? So that way we can switch to components. But let's first create another component. That way we can switch our navigation, all right? Right now, this, you know, if we go to this path right here, it's going to take us to, to our home. But let's build another component, for example, like a contact component or something like that. Let's just call it home component, right? and all right home component actually oh, i created an empty file there silly me i want to create something else in home okay because we're displaying our post at home so let's just call this contact dot view okay and now with this component we don't need a lot of a uh, markup or anything like that we just need some type of template because that's the only thing that we are going to be displaying, right? And the root and the contact works just like that. You don't need to put all these spaces, okay? And let's go register that component. So let's go to app view and um, we're going to copy this guy right here. contact and uh, contact right here this one last thing that we need to do guys to make our router work okay but I'll show you right now what it is contact okay so we got our component register and it should be working now okay now in order to make this work we need to make everything more dynamic and when I say dynamic I mean that we need to tell our our main application our main component that we don't want this data here to be okay this is our main navigation we we don't want to show just the post example here we want to show everything okay so we want to show anybody that asks 
asks for a component. Anybody that goes to the URL and asks for a component, we need to make sure that this data here is dynamic. It's not just one component. And to make this data dynamic, we need to use another uh, director here or a, an HT, uh, custom tag here called view, like this, router view, okay? Now, our view app is going to detect this guy right here, a router view, and is going to apply things dynamically into this field right here, okay? So, um, in order for this to work, let's go right here and create some type of link. Another thing that I'm going to teach you in this here, this lecture, it's how to create a link with a router view, because right now, if you go here and you say, okay, I want you to take me to contact, and you create a regular link, and you say contact, and let's go back to our main. Let's create another route for that. And this is going to be contact. So people, when people visit contact, we're going to load the contact module. Now we need to import that on top. Remember in the main.js where you import, where you do most of the uh, registration stuff. So we import this there and we say contact like that. Okay. So now this should work. Let's go back here. Let's make sure that this refreshes. If we say contact on top, you see contact works, but we have to refresh. If I click here, you see that it's refreshing and it's taking me to the home page. Let's go back to our navigation, which is in app that view. This is supposed to be taking me to the home and the contact to our contact page. So let's click here. Let's refresh. Click here, home, contact. See something is going on here. So let's go and, and play around with this and tell it to actually send us to the contact component, not to the contact, uh, not to make a request to the browser. So the way we do that is we enclose all that Actually, we don't have to enclose it. We need to create another custom element here called router link. And this by itself is going to be a link, an anchor tag. Okay, this is going to create an anchor tag. So right now, if I say contact, I'm going to show you. I'm going to take this out of here. I'll show you when this refreshes. It's supposed to do this automatically. There we go. This contact button is supposed to be somewhere here, guys. Uh huh. Okay. It's supposed to. All right. So I guess we have to write the other parts to make it dynamic. Okay. So I'm going to give it a class of nav link. Nav link just to make it. Let's see if it shows right here. It's supposed to show. Okay, it's not showing yet. Let's um now we we gotta use this attribute here called two and we use the colon to bind it, right? And then here in between this quotes, I'm gonna put curl uh single quotes to make sure that it goes, because you can write an expression there, guys. Okay, that's why we've got to write single quotes here, because it's a string that we're sending in. This is static data. You can also send dynamic data through this two attribute here, or um, directive here, if you see, colon. So let's come back here, see if this works now. Come on. There we go. So we had to actually write the colon T T O to make this work. That sucks. I thought it was going to work without it. <laughs> but anyway, so contact now, let's wait, there we go, and we click on it, it takes us to our component, contact, look at how fast that is, now the home is not working, so we need to fix that one, so I'm going to copy this whole thing, and place it right there, I'm going to replace this to home, and 
this string here is going to be this little let's let this refresh I got no patience contact boom see how fast that is that it's beautiful guys beautiful okay I hope you guys are satisfied with this crash course and um, if you have any questions always ask in the discussion or send me an email to edwin at edwindias.com remember that I have all the courses in JavaScript I have a whole bunch of JavaScript courses to teach you JavaScript if you need to learn it TypeScript courses angular courses so you know I'm there if you need any help with anything guys don't hesitate I'm just a person like you and I'm very humble so you know if I I get thousands of messages all the time thousands in my email and I get hundreds literally every day from one platform so but I always answer the question if it's 24 or 48 hours I'm here for you thank you so much and I'll see you on the next lecture or the next course take care congratulations my dear students I'm so glad that you were able to finish the course successfully you are an achiever now you might be asking yourself where to go next well I'm gonna recommend for you to actually learn a back-end technology if you don't know and if you know I still recommend no .js. okay even if you don't know .js, I recommend for you to actually take one that will help you build some type of project, something that you can learn lots from it, okay? Because Node.js is a really cool JavaScript runtime environment that's going to help you build better JavaScript applications, and they are going to be super fast. Now, for those of you that are taking this course with me right here on this platform, I want to give you a discount. Here's a discount code right here. So when you're about to, sh you know, shop for this course, you don't have to pay $200 for it. You can just pay $10 US dollars right now for a temporary time, for a limited time, and you're going to get this course for this price. And the code is view hyphen node. And you can also get this discount if you go to edwindiaz.com slash node. Okay. Going to that link there is going to give you a discount for getting this course for $10. And you might be asking yourself, what are we going to be doing in this course? Well, the project that we got there is building a complete CMS system with a login system. We're going to do a lot of cool things in there. You're going to learn how to build a whole application using Node.js from scratch. So even if you don't know anything about Node.js, you're going to become a Node.js developer when you finish this course. Now, lastly, I want to, you know, ask you to leave a review for this course. So if this course benefited you in any way, please don't forget to leave me those five big stars. If it's not five stars, let me know before reviewing. So that way I can fix it. Give me a chance. Reviews are super important, guys. They're very important for us developers. It will affect us. Uh, and not only developers, instructors like me. It will affect us emotionally. Okay, and it will affect us financially as sometimes. Lastly, and this is the last time, thank you so much for actually being here in this course, for spending the time to study with me and give me your, your time. And I really enjoy creating this course for you. May God bless you. May the universe give you all the energy you need to succeed in life. And if you have any questions, let me know and I'm here for you. Thank you so much.